Hey guys, that's me, Victoria Weiss, and I'm a freshman kinesiology major here at the University of Arkansas. While my study has little to do with art, I understand the importance of art and have found some very interesting pieces at Crystal Bridges, one such that I'll tell you about throughout this video. In Bentonville's Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art, George Siegel's renowned Depression Breadline is a plaster casting that is a fairly new addition to the 20th century art gallery and has been popular since its arrival in 2015. The Depression Breadline consists of five plaster casted men standing in a single file line outside of a door. In the 1920s and 30s, many people relied on government assistance. This depiction, created in 1991 and then replicated in 1999, represents a group of typical men awaiting their food rations during this time of the Great Depression. The figures are actually life casts of people from Siegel's life, which he was exceptionally fond of. In order, the men are as follows. Leon Bibble, Martin Friedman, Donald Lucada, George Siegel himself, and David Berger. Set in front of the dark brick, the slump-shouldered line of five men were casted from plaster while the backdrop was also made of metal and wood for the door. While the original art piece was cast in bronze for the FDR memorial, the work at Crystal Bridges is finished using acrylic paint. This medium accounts for the rusting effect, which is why the men's faces and the brick backdrop are tinted teal blue. By emulating the blue color that is uncovered upon metal being rusted, Siegel's use of neutral colors qualify the work as pop art. While working at Rutgers University, a student of Siegel's brought in dry plaster bandages to his art class, and this action stood as the start of the casting process that George Siegel created. In the 1960s, Siegel began making art from plaster castings of real people, including himself. Considered to be an approach to pop art, Siegel's casts had a distinctive style related to human values and were either painted or unpainted in simple monochromic colors. Besides the Depression breadline, other plaster castings of Siegel's include Man Sitting at Table, Three People on Four Benches, and Fireside Chat. Creating his own method of sculpting, George Siegel's sculptural mediums were plaster bandages with gauze strips designed for his figurative castings of people. In his process, Siegel wrapped his models in the bandages section by section and plastered the pieces together after removing and hardening them. The shells created stand as the work Siegel is so well known for. While eventually painting the figures, this inventive artist either left the cast stark white, painted them in neutral tones using heavy brush strokes, or casted them in bronze. Siegel also occasionally paired his figures with an environmental scene or display. An example of this addition can be seen in Depression Breadline, as the men are seen in front of a brick wall and wooden door awaiting rations. Using unity, balance, contrast, form, and texture, Siegel sculpted a scenery piece reflective of hopelessness and devastation through the tableau of the breadline. Siegel's works evoke themes that correlate with the Marxist methodology. A Marxist approach analyzes art by its political, social, and economic role in society. Politically speaking, Depression Breadline is placed at the Franklin D. Roosevelt Memorial, so the sculptings represent a time in political history in which Roosevelt led the U.S. During the Great Depression, many relied on food rations or waited outside of soup kitchens in hopes of getting leftover bread. The five men Siegel casted are a realistic depiction of these types of people that struggle to feed themselves and their families after the economy crashed. Marxism looks at the economic factors of the creation of art, such as the cost or availability of materials. In this way, Siegel's Depression breadline also fits the theory of Marxism. By only using plaster bandages, simple colors, and actual people as his subjects, Siegel's works consisted of fairly low-cost materials and few of them. This would relate to the Marxist idea in the fact that during the Great Depression, people couldn't afford much, so if an artist did want to create something, they had to be frugal and creative. Siegel, having grown up in this time period, may have only used sparing supplies to bring this economic factor into his displayed artwork. Having previously visited Washington, D.C. and seeing Siegel's same artwork on display at the FDR Memorial, I was pleasantly surprised to come across it again in Bentonville. While George Siegel's Depression Breadline may not be the most upbeat display at Crystal Bridges, it is certainly riveting and deserves to be viewed and valued closely by passersby. 